Aloha everyone and welcome back to another space weather update. My name is Alexis. This is the Ascension Diaries. It is Friday, February 2nd, 2024. It's currently 1:27 p.m. here in Phoenix, Arizona, and I am seeing some very intense anomalies coming through the extremely low frequency amplitudes being measured over publicly on this Russian website, which is the Tomsk University Space Observing System. And even though this city is seven hours ahead of the universal time, they're at universal time plus seven. We over here are at universal time minus seven usually. So it's pretty much like a night and day experience to watch these charts and I wish there was an American option for me to publicly watch. As a country like this, I always figured there would be one of these resources for us. And I also thought that when the popularization of a Russian resource and an Italian resource were, I would say, surging on social media, in this particular section of the populace that is very interesting to prospecting eyes. There's no push or trending for an American system because I think that sort of that sort of spirit has been struggling. And if you are in the US right now, you may be aware that there is a movement of energy for sure and a mobilization of, of, I would say, equipment and people. And there has been mobilizations like this in North America since 2020 a few times. And there's a lot of movement going on over here. But it's not the only place in the world. It's just a place where I can physically have people I know and I grew up around telling me this firsthand information. It's surreal to be living in these times, but also watching the disturbing situations and these extremely low frequencies that Russia is publicly sharing. So in my opinion, it's almost like they're more transparent with us than potentially science is here in America, which is an interesting concept and one I'm not so sure is a helpful idea but I am saying it and I don't mean to be divisive because it's a planet so for me I just see the potential for more voices and conversation and I really am hoping that that can happen throughout the development of this research and that more transparency and more discussion is free and open and those who are genuinely interested in this in this understanding and I would say in the music that occurs in our atmosphere and the mingling of the cosmos with our planet in a genuine, almost childlike way, the childlike wonder of it all, then the frequencies that we're operating in are also going to reflect that coherency. And I couldn't even do this video today and look at the time up at the top of this particular recording 1331 these mirroring numbers i've been seeing quite a bit the last few days so the portal as well today is 2 2 and 2024 so it's portal energy for sure is what i'm also bringing in and as you can see on this chart there is missing data but yeah this transparency and this planetary information is supposed to bring us together <clears throat> And I promote world peace on this channel because I truly believe that we are already in a wonderful state of peace and our natural state for the most part is peaceful and studying the sun and the other major electromagnetic bodies that are naturally combusting and having these electrochemical, you know, transcendental experiences all the time, creating change, creating the new, I just want to just observe it with more what's the word with more objective objective standpoint and see how one thing affects another thing and try and see the whole cascading or even the 
the looping, I don't know, of patterns and energy and the flow and the music and the song. And I think that's what we do when we sit and meditate is we're listening to the music and the song. And that's why we will get those clumping synchronicities all together. Because for some reason, right now in the ether rolling past our reality is a whole bunch of whales, for example, and or <clears throat> thoughts about so many things. And what helps also is my Chani app that I use to get the astrological transits. And please, if you download the Chani app and you get the notifications, don't click on them because it will open the app and you won't be able to read that notification again. It'll take you somewhere slightly off. And so I missed one today and I know I'm missing something astrologically because look at this, there is something going on. <laughs> And I didn't look it up before this video, and I've already tried to shoot this video like five times. So let's see if it may come through. I can look it up maybe while we are filming this. But the purpose of this particular window and why I have you gathered here today, if you still are, and God help you, I'm going to look at the global consciousness dot for fun because I've been watching it in the red. And I was trying to film during this red period and just failed over and over. I kept making the same mistake, which I'm doing right now as I'm filming. But thankfully, you can still sort of see through the image. So I apologize. So I'll go back to the original, the original window. But that's an example of what I kept doing over and over. Because I really have to talk to you about this and the brainwaves of Earth and the brainwaves of us mammals on Earth and the extremely low frequencies of Earth and why even the most subtle changes in amplitude seem to matter. It seems to matter to me on a, a deep soul level. I can't, I'm sure you can feel it in my energy <laughs> and the annoying amount of research I do do about this, but for some reason, I'm just constantly validated to keep going. People just message me like, hey, as soon as I feel weird, you're posting and boom, I feel validated. And that, I don't know how many times I've heard that. It's a good feeling. So I just keep going. I'm having a wild time and I'm watching the brainwaves get tickled. And I'm pretty sure I've developed and multiple people have also developed the system where they create this image to overlay this chart to show you where the brain, which sections of these graphs are the brain waves, the different channels our brain turns to basically, which makes us operate certain ways, different parts of our nervous system, the way we think, everything changes when we go through these different channels. You sleeping, delta over here, zero to four, then we go into theta, then we go into alpha, beta, high beta, and then gamma down here. Please look up the brainwave chart. Please look, look it up. Get more info. I have some stuff written here for each one. Delta, you're sleeping, for example. Theta talks about memory. Alpha, you're sort of idle-minded, idle, mi <clears throat> idle excuse me, and aware. Beta, you're starting to get active-minded and problem-solving. And then high beta, things start getting stressful. You're really having to solve those problems. And then we go into gamma, which is just this wakeful, compassionate, perceptive, this like bliss state. I, It can be described in my opinion. And I rarely get to see that this human resonance chart here or these 0 to 40 hertz region that they're listening to basically with these antenna and getting this feedback, this amplification over time. They're getting amplifications in the alpha brainwave state over top of the loud, like it's, like it's basically the loudest thing in the atmosphere during some of these many hours. And it's not just the alpha, but also in the gamma. And delta, theta, so pretty much in this particular window, there's activity in all the brainwave states. So likely, the most crude thing I could say is, is probably you probably aren't sleeping. But the shape of all this is way more extra than usual. Usually we see something like this that cascades downward, not these weird chunks that seem to prolong over time. This seems very bizarre and unnecessary, I would say. But the fact that there was a gamma stimulation 
at least in our brainwaves as intelligent beings, I think that that would be some breakthroughs for us. If we just were forced during those hours of the day, the atmosphere of earth was just forced to be in a gamma brainwave state for hours, but also along with high beta, beta or freer frequency, like cutting through here like a knife, this huge alpha section, like basically the entire glob of alpha brain waves that you can like you're, you're not going to miss somebody they were not going to accidentally not be an alpha in my opinion this was it was an alpha moment for sure alpha the alpha alpha up on here for real and it carried on this way like very bizarre they cut out some of it for whatever reason this part is cut out also but it's it's not cut out it's very interesting I don't want to pontificate too much on this because literally I've never quite seen anything like it, but I've seen similar stuff. It's not that at blowing my mind, not like the Father's Day anomaly where it clearly something was very wrong. <laughs> Probably not with our reality, but with the machinery. But it was one of those misnomers where you're like, ah, that's a fun day. And that's why I put it on a shirt. So you can go to Teespring and buy it if you want and show it off. And the definition for the Schumann Resonance is on the back of the shirt. So you don't have to keep telling people. Just turn around. Let them read off of your broad, strong backs as we begin the farming season here. As spring is springing early, according to the Americans as well. <clears throat> and they're groundhogs today. So... Get ready, get planting. We're going to be growing. It's going to have a long grow season if it's an early spring, right? So anyways, so this alpha brainwave basically episode, along with all this delta and theta disturbance and a little bit of high beta, not so much the second time, definitely some major gamma, like I said, not so much the second time. These two episodes happened while I was sleeping last night, pretty much. This was more so this morning. This is daytime stuff here in North America. This has already been going on. This was daytime. This is nighttime. This was when I was texting y'all last night, being like, what's going on? Oh. <clears throat> Excuse me. There's already so much here. It's just, it was already throwing me off. And then it went ahead and did it like two more times in a very weird way. Similar behavior, just more more prolonged. It's like starting an engine. It's like you watch it start and it kind of does the thing and then it starts up again and it does it a little longer and then one more time and then <laughs> is it going to do it again? Like how many more of these are we going to body? Like this is especially all the cross working here. This is something else. I'm going to have a drink of my wild tonic sparkling June blueberry basil to clear my throat. Sorry. Love drinking out of blue glass. These are made and bottled here in Arizona. Shout out. We love them and it helps me think so I can show you like what the heck is this? What does any of this mean really? So I'm not going to make the mistake again. We're going to move along. I'm going to remove this image. Here we go, we're free. So I hope that helped. I hope that gave you some visuals here that each of these sections, it makes you feel a little different, makes you do different stuff. If there's some sort of thing that's stoking this area in the atmosphere or these frequencies in our shared atmosphere, it's stoking that in your brain as well. That's the concept. So, and not just our brains, we're not the only ones with brains, right? So that's the concern as well. It's not just us. If you need to be... A service to others being and you just don't really care about us humans or something just think about the animals the innocent animals running around in this with this with us right now and dealing with this people do people message me about their pets at home all the time I know that kind of like the happy medium of research because they're domesticated they're attuned to humans and so on but watching the wild birds and so on in their yards and the animals around who stay in that Again, that gray zone of contact and no contact with humans, they feel it weird too. So we're going to get that data. I would say the weirdest stuff I've been seeing on the planet though in response to all of this is obviously 
explosions. So I've been I've seen news about like three separate places that had some sort of explosion or a plane crash where just sending smoke and flames and you know it, but they're in kind of precise locations. They don't it's not a big spread out thing. It's always kind of like small impact columning upward kind of impacts. So I'm thinking about this like acupuncture on the planet, right? So when these frequencies get amplified, it's also kind of like acupuncture to our brain waves. Sometimes I feel and the bells and the whistles literally of what we resonate as the frequency here, like I mentioned, 19 Hertz is known as like the fear frequency to some, the myth busters talked about it. Look it up. 19 Hertz is pretty uncomfortable. So that's cutting through here like a knife. And that doesn't always happen. This looks like a, a flaming, like, <laughs> yes, it looks like a, f a flaming laser. So uncomfortable a little bit. And there's some wobbly stuff over here and knobby knees and womps over here and some voice memos and some grocery lists. I don't know. Like, we're all going to start buying something <laughs> sponsored by who what what do we buy next i don't know what's the what's the instructions oh great leader it's kind of like that moment for me i'm like this is ridiculous but how could it look any more suspicious <laughs> i don't know <laughs> So I don't know. I need to get the data from human beings, basically, because I just got to look at this and laugh. I could watch other people's videos, however they're going to explain it, whatever. Do it. Gather as much a variety of research as you can stand. The one sad thing about science is often things that don't go well with your own hypothesis, you have a hard time listening to. So it's hard to learn other perspectives sometimes on your own work. And there's that confirmation bias so just know that about humans I can't say that I'm going to avoid doing that either but that's just psychology I'm just helping you out on that end of things my study is more about the psychology <laughs> and checking and balancing so people are concerned why Russian charts matter for people in the U.S. well because we all are under the same sky we're sharing the same planetary atmosphere that's my argument. We're all sharing an ionosphere. So that signal, no matter what, is always there. The Schumann Resonances is a planetary frequency. So you can't get away from it. And those readings in Russia were outbidding the planetary frequency much louder. Even though those are subtle, subtle measurements and a lot of this is very subtle energy work. But it's there and I'm picking up plenty of data to keep me going like the if I couldn't get good data I couldn't predict and I can predict so that's kind of like a proof proof in, it's in the pudding kind of thing and you guys can predict and you guys you picked it up just like I knew you would I knew you would I knew all of us would pick this up I felt a confidence I was like oh this is stupid I can't believe no one taught all of us this we would have loved this information when I learned about all this stuff it was fantastic. So I just spread the love. This is what my favorite information and know that I felt like was kind of left out of public education was the earth frequencies. And it's not even just earth. Just don't forget that. Go to the Wikipedia page, Schumann Resonances. Venus has, they have the math for it. They predicted it mathematically before they could even make the antenna to like measure it, I feel like. That's what they say anyways here on earth and then they're like well those conditions exist elsewhere you can do venus mars jupiter saturn even the biggest moon titan you just need a close planetary size ellipsoidal soidal cavity say that a hundred times consisting of conducting lower and upper at boundaries sorry not atmosphere lower and upper boundaries separated by an insulating medium for the earth the conducting lower boundary is its surface, and the upper boundary is the ionosphere. Other planets may have a similar electrical conductivity geometry, so it's speculated that they should possess similar resonant behavior. 
A source of electrical excitation is the second thing you need of electromagnetic waves in extremely low frequency range. So it says there's five candidates in our solar system. Mo modeling Schumann resonances on planets and moons of the solar system is complicated by the lack of knowledge of the waveguide parameter, which I believe they mean is some of these you don't really know what would be the surface, but they're claiming they have some in this kind of low-key backhanded way, which is an interesting conversation in itself. We don't need to have that whole thing here. That's for you to have with your spirit team and such forth and Wikipedia as we move on and share more resources. So where were we? We were in Italy being like, hey, Russia's not the only one who shows this. Italy's showing stuff at the same time in the extremely low frequency range. It's just a little harder in Italy because you got to zoom in a little closer. The Russian chart's only showing this, this whole section right here, technically, only from like here to here we're seeing in Russia. So Italy's got a huge range difference. So sometimes stuff in Russia, even though it's subtle, even in Russia, on here it's very difficult to look at. But these little charts are fun because this is a zero to 60 hertz, so you get an even more little zoomed in, a little bit view. So this one's actually more accurate, I would say, comparing the Russian scaling to these little squares here whatever they are you know rectangles here and they break them apart and they label them here so it shouldn't be too hard if you have a tv or a screen and you can blow it up you can see i figured it out you'll be able to figure it out i was not a straight a student no that was not me i do not have a robo robotic brain <laughs> like i said this is like my fifth take of this video and i'm praying it keeps going well please. It's still going well. I didn't make that mistake again. Okay. My confidence was just like shook today. And honestly, I got my confidence shook and personal moment. I got a terrible phone call come through basically in between and news that could have shattered me. And last, the last two dragon years back in 2012 and year 2000 those were rough years as well and I heard some if I heard that news back then I would have been destroyed and I did hear some similar news then so I'm seeing this cycle like show up literally right now today as I'm filming as like I moved through like two really like big things that used to stop me in my tracks so I've matured and I've seen proof just today like just within a you know just today really so what a day already, like literally February 2nd, I com like applause to you. This is some very interesting energy either way. I don't know what's going on, but so far I'm doing okay with it and I'm mastering it. It's like I'm being challenged, but it's not taking me down. I'm, I'm, I'm meeting the challenge and prevailing, which feels great. So I hope that's what's happening for you guys. That's why I keep pushing through and trying to make this video. I do it for y'all, the people who are actually genuinely interested in what I'm saying and are following along. We have four out of six locations here at the heartmath.org, Schumann Resonances Amplification Measuring System. Everybody's got their own system of measuring how amplified these very low frequencies, these earth frequencies are resonating. Why? Because, oh, it's probably important. California is on here. Saudi Arabia is on here, Lithuania is on here, and Alberta is on here. You're seeing a normal trend. They're all, the radiation levels are just going up. It's just amplifying. Earth is amplifying in multiple locations in a similar kind of upward trend. You know, more in some places than others. That's a seasonal thing. Lithuania, maybe it's not a seasonal thing, actually. Interesting. I don't think Lithuania is getting a lot of extra sunshine, but they're getting a lot of amplification, so that's something to think about. And this is also just the 29th into the 31st, this trend. We're missing two whole days of data. Like, this is the part that sucks. Sorry, I can't get you that data. It's not ready yet. Sorry, not ready yet. I just want to show you the Russian chart one more time that the amplification of that one alpha wave I was showing you that happened, the alpha and the gamma wave, 
kind of visible in here a little bit. This is closer to gamma radiation. The fourth resonance of Schumann resonances is closer into the gamma. But yeah, the alpha one, which is the second Schumann resonance, is kind of like those alpha waves. The first and second kind of play in that area, I would say. Let's go back to... I'll turn it on again. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. This is not the right size now. Whoop. Excuse me, I'm just fixing this. So we can see. I'm trying to think. I just got to read these. Alpha, 8 to 15 hertz, right. And the second Schumann resonance is around 14 hertz, okay? So theta is like the primary Schumann resonance. That's the theta range usually. So the theta into alpha, I would say, is actually like right there. That's the Schumann. Is like the theta into the alpha brain waves of humans. That's kind of where the Schumann resonance is. It's between 7 and 8 hertz. So with that being in mind, we are now looking at the specific amplitudes of the first Schumann resonance, which is around 7 to 8 hertz. It hit a max amplitude of 19, and it just did that like an hour ago. So we just got a primary earth resonance amplification little pump here within the like last hour so maybe you're feeling a little more connected to the earth i was because i started filming this video again so maybe that's what helped but the big deal is that the second schumann resonance or earth resonance which hangs out around 14 hertz hit an amplification in our alpha brain waves to an 84 and i want to say nano tesla but the units for this chart are not disclosed but if i my best guess is that it's being measured in nano tesla but this 84 just in general just if i'm showing you a scale of colors like a rainbow of colors and like red is the most intense on the scale and purple on the side of the rainbow is the least intense an 84 from my experience watching these charts is in the very upper percentile like it would be in the red or the orange area of this rainbow that I just made up to help you maybe visualize in your mind how powerful the second Schumann resonance of earth radiated yesterday and our our alpha brain waves potentially as well so please look up alpha brain waves and see if you were having any of those experiences yesterday in a heightened way. But I'd also invite you to look up the gamma brain waves and if you had any of those experiences because I'm seeing the biggest feedback from those two brain wave sections. But I can't tell you how amplified the gamma got versus the 84 over here because I don't have that data here, unfortunately. I wish I did, I would tell you. If I did, I would tell you. You know me, if I did, I would tell you. And that's my love language. If I can, I will say something. If I can't, I'm sorry. <laughs> I do what I can. The Q factor also, very wacky doodle. And I haven't been tracking this as hard because Q factor is so hard to say in English. Like the explanation of what it is. For me, it just does not roll off the tongue. And this is when I wonder, like, have I talked about this in other languages? And a part of me feels like, yes. <laughs> I believe that may have been something I'm, I don't know, on a parallel timeline or something where we're speaking some other language. I'm doing the same work. So it's like blending in my brain. And welcome to the sci-fi no novel in my mind. It continues on with some more data to support the madness that I'm clearly in the grip of. So come join me, crazy people. Let's look at what other crazy people are doing and 
find correlations that aren't there, right? Let's do some real science. The trending topics here, by the way, on Twitter are XRP. So that's just been coming up a whole bunch. I'm not going to talk about any of these others right now. I want to talk about the explosions that all happened since basically this Russian thing got real weird. So this is all happening in this kind of weird little window. Look, just look over here. Look at the screen. Okay, this, what's going on here? I'm going to show you what happened in the world in response and you just enjoy seeing some weird little patterns. I'm not making all these patterns in the news. They're doing this. So what's going on? We've got an explosion in the ga at a gas station in Nairobi, capital of Kenya. Lots of some people were definitely around. People got hurt. Shout out to them. I hope they recover swiftly. This flame is just right next to somebody's apartment building. Like, holy crap. So it just makes you think, oh, every gas station can do this. Excellent. Great talk. Yes. And during that and around that time, basically, we got this solar flare that slammed into Australia. So the first, or basically, the first few hours of the second three hours in we got this solar flare an m-class solar flare and since then there's been a couple c-class so it's been under the radar for those of you who don't have space weather live app on your phone giving you the alerts like this they won't tell you about c-class flares but that's why you can watch the show so you can look in a little deeper and say oh wow you could go to spaceweatherlive.com and look at these yourself they record all of the flare behavior, but they only alert you about things that are M-class or X-class, it seems like, for now. Maybe me mentioning this will magically make them just give us those C-class flares because more data is helpful. And they're all little peaks, and those peaks make, make me tweak, you know? I can feel them. Like, let's get more precise. Like, let's really get into the dance. Like, to me, it just seems like a no-brainer, making things more efficient. And this solar flare was happening right around the time I was seeing reports about a sun diving object, which I love this guy. He's on them all the time. I love, love, love seeing these posts because I'm just so relieved, like, oh, there it is. There's our little narrative changer. Hello, friend. And it just makes me feel things. I don't know. And I'm excited. It's two o'clock on February 2nd. I'm just going to take that as a and this clip is two seconds long, so I'm just going to take all those numbers and applaud our little two, 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 energy, two, 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 2024, whatever, energy going into the sun, making some bizarre readings happen, a solar flare, which isn't bizarre, thankfully that's normal. Play, this radio emission hitting a velocity of 1,444 kilometers per second at 4 UTC also made everyone very excited on 2-2, 2024, like at 306 UTC. Like, look at this. This is so many number codes. That was a fun one. And um, then we're watching a small plane just dive into a mobile park in Clearwater, Florida. I lived in a mobile park for like three years it feels like I think it was almost three years so sympathy over there because what the heck that's insane and then over here a similar looking explosion at a chemical base not a gas station maybe it is a gas station but chemical base in Yin Chan Chuan of Nick Ningxia region China I have no idea if I said any of that right I've never attempted that I'm so sorry the Ningdong chemical base you're writing it in some graphics I'm supposed to know how to sound out, so I'm going to give it a shot. It's that mutual language here. I love it. But I don't love this, so this is freaking me out. So we don't want to do that, but it's happening. These, this is multiple in a day. That's pretty much, yeah. We've got some burning going on in Chile. There was an unmarked sunspot for a little too long, making all of us kind of nervous that the NOAA was blind to a place that could clearly flare us like directly. So we were a little concerned about that. Cleopatra keeps coming up. If you have not seen this version of Cleopatra with Elizabeth Taylor in, it's a 1963 film. 
if you're into film fashion if you're a libra just go watch it for real it's incredible incredible and it's very long but it's good i liked it still the drama was still per it's perfect it was good so CMEs, yeah, we've been watching them. I made that little fart noise video yesterday. We all had a fun time with the fart song. That fart literally expanded and expanded and stayed. There was the first part. Here comes the second part. And this just radiates and radiates and radiates and radiates. And then another one comes off the side. So we have we have some juiciness coming off of the sun. The Schumann resonance charts being interpreted in fun ways. It's not that I hate when people interpret stuff. I just get if they do it in weird ways, like there's just a way to do it, in my opinion. Like artists know. I think we can be crazy artists, but there's also some sanity available. Like we're not going to tell you how to live your life. You know what I'm saying? That's when you start stepping on toes. The sunspots, the solar, the, basically the sun cycle is is progressing all right. It's doing okay. Nobody's that concerned the predictions versus what's going on. It seems like so far we're not that concerned. I'll get back to you with that tomorrow. It seems like we're okay for the most part. Solar cycle isn't looking anomalous at all other than maybe those sun diving objects, which we don't have to really bring up if you don't want to. I get it. Here's another view of that place in Kenya blowing up. So we had Kenya, China, and then a plane fly into Clearwater, Florida. While the sun's doing this and shooting off rings, this one's really cool. This one's pretty. I like this one. It's got good vibes. That one wouldn't even go earth directed, so that one's probably also why I like it. You want to take a better look? Look at it explode. So I did the fart video yesterday. It was cute. It's a saxophone synth, actually. That was a full coronal ejection. I kind of missed that one earlier. So that was the 31st. The fart video was those two, this one right here, yep, and it just kept going, that fart, and then another one, and another one. So pretty much the fart video I made yesterday was about a coronal mass ejection that was fairly large, and it lasted a long time. It extended out in space and was quite large, I would say. It was pretty intense. And then we had a couple other ones. Actually, it looks more like three or four smaller ones afterwards. So the sun's been busy. It's been going. So we're going to be getting radiation for the next three days for sure. Just looking at exactly today. Like when you look at the sun and you see the newest, newest data and you see there's a coronal mass ejection coming out, just know that three days from now, you'll still be feeling it. So if you can look at the screen and it doesn't do anything else for three days and you're in the clear after those three days and you get a little break and that does kind of happen sometimes. They're few and far between in the peak of the solar cycle, which we're in, but there are 11 year cycles. We're going to eventually cast count, go back down in intensity and chill out. But when the sun is stimulated, it stimulates our magnetic field and that can cause our magnetic field to get stronger if it's healthy and some people are concerned about our magnetic field and this is all a part of like the growing and the changing I think there's good things going on and that's why I do enjoy this it feels natural almost and then we watch things that are a little unnatural but seem interesting like this sun diving object which you can see coming in here now there it goes we got some extended footage of it flying. Oh, and then they cut it. Okay, so we're not ready to see the whole bit of footage. But it's on its way. So to see that object going, it means there's going to be more explosions. So I'm going to make another fun edit about it. And you'll hear about it in a couple days, if not today or tomorrow. Because that object was getting close. Like, it's going to be hitting around today or tomorrow. So we'll just see. I'll be here watching. That's like I'm babysitting sometimes. I'm like, okay, show me your finger. Like, what is it going to be next? What's your painting going to look like? I watch, I get, it's like the sun diving object is like a paintbrush and some paints. And then the kid just like throws it and it makes some art. 
I wonder if you can see the object in this video. It seemed like I might have been able to, but no, not so much luck. The articles right today about space weather aren't that crazy, you know? No one's that concerned on the front end of things, it seems like, except for maybe the mega constellation of satellites around the Earth. But hey, I bet you they have a solution for that. And I bet you some kid thought of the solution the second I just said there might be a problem. Like, we're pretty good at problem solving. So I think we've got this. Let's move along. Solar wind. Let's look at the global consciousness dot again. Yes, we're in the green. So sunspots, they're picking up. Coronal hole, meh, it's doing okay. I think it's making us a little bit like uncomfortable and like the it's making us tired because it's a prolonged thing. And it kind of happens low key in the background. These coronal holes, they don't flare or flash or do anything. They just like steadily beam us. And so it's subtle, but it can it takes a while for it to go away. And like I said, we've got a wave coming. So this chart's going to change as soon as that sun diving object hits and we get the new footage of whatever's going to happen tonight. Whatever CME, whatever it's going to do, it's going to be interesting. And then I'll show you the new video. And we'll see what, what planet it's going towards. We'll throw a little party. Why not? I realize that I'm not playing my background music. So let's turn that on since I'm going to ramble a little longer. So these are the mistakes, you know, but it's okay because we're going to keep going because I am not redoing this video. <laughs> we're sticking into this one. I'm digging my heels in. So big deal over here is Hawaii is shaking still like a leaf. Like this whole Kilauea area is just is decided it wants to shake. But I think it might be slowing down, but my phone is literally being, dinging me like nuts. It's I've never, ever, ever seen so many alerts. It's somehow registering like five different separate little tremors in the same caldera and then giving me the alert at the same time. It's fascinating. I have not quite seen that before. And the Hawaiians and people who know a lot about Hawaii, I've noticed there is an attitude with them and they are very territorial. It's like talking to a bunch of pit bulls about their favorite toy. Like they're not willing to give it up and they don't want you to know anything about it or why you're concerned or why you even bother mentioning them because how dare you. So I'm not trying to offend anybody in Hawaii ever, but literally, I just keep getting downloads about it, so I'm just going to talk about it just like every other pl place on the planet. I just think it's funny that people who live in this one place kind of think they're better than everybody else, but the whole planet is pretty awesome. And there's some pretty awesome people everywhere. And honestly, I'd prefer to hang out with them because it seems like Hawaii might be like the land of the Karens. And I never realized that. It's such a... Of course, there's going to be those extremely controlling and kind of ignorant people maybe attracted to the area because they're territorial, but they want to be territorial over the nicest place because, again, that's showing status, which is competition and territorial behavior. And then there's people there who I don't even know if they even go inside or even have ever worn shoes on the island. Like, I'm not... I don't doubt that those people are there and those are the people I end up running into when I go places so and those are the people who end up following me on social media for the most part so we all kind of get each other we're also looking after all these other locations and we care about the earthquakes all over the world I've got people chiming in in Chile who are very concerned about the way they feel and they're very concerned they're waking up we've got people over here over by the Great Lakes having their first feelings for the first time in res I would say in resonance or in correlation with these charts finally joining their spouse in the research because they're finally now also having some type of their own symptom that they've come upon themselves so what pushed them over the edge what finally pushes all these people over the edge to become sensitive and finally notice it's these episodes time and time again and that's why I do this channel because I'm literally watching humans mutate 
And then I'm like, holy crap, what just happened? And I look at the charts and stuff like this is here. And I'm like, oh my God, I should make a video. And then I try and make a video 10 times and we get what we get. And some of you get the message and we move along. I'm watching also the economy and being heavily educated in the new earth economy, basically in this quantum assets and the behaviors of the human beings who built them and who are talking about them now. Man, am I ever digging into their souls. Like, watch out if I find out about them or I look at them, it's just like, all of a sudden I'm just getting the downloads. Like, a protective mother bear, like, her, like, okay, I'm tired of all of you scrambling around. Like, I feel like that's the feminine coming in being like, okay, gentlemen, <laughs> we are making sure now that things are going to be, <laughs> um, I would say sturdy and functional is probably the message. So from my divine feminine to my divine masculine, that's how that's coming through. <laughs> the earthquakes is just one of those clues about what's moving where. Is there a whole civilization living under Kilauea? It's not even showing up on this map. I don't know why. <laughs> I can't get any research to show up about Hawaii over here. It's bizarre. So why? I don't know. The Philippines are the only ones showing up with much other data as well. It's kind of bizarre. Now I'm starting to see some weirdness in the earthquake data in general. Okay, let's go back to this one because you guys will be like, what was that? Kenya. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Kenya, there it is. And Kenya's capital just exploded. So that's interesting. Something's up over there. I mean, the thing is, is by the time we find out about it, it's already happened for pretty much everything. So our response is what we can control. And I want to send love and awareness and understanding. Thailand is offline or something. There's a lot of offline right now, actually. There's a lot of data missing. Data is missing. So earthquake data is missing, y'all. Wasn't expecting to even say that, so... I'm just going to keep rambling and looking for clues over here. So there's like a triangular shaped storm going on over here in the United States <laughs> where this is Texas right here. So there's some drama going on over here right now in the collective consciousness, I would say, and movement of big metal trucks and a lot of friction against the earth, creating tension and building energy. And then there's more of a dispersed thing going on over here, which is kind of bizarre. Don't see this dis type of dispersion of lightning. This area in the middle of the ocean is just constantly running. This, this process, this whole system right here, this little swig right here, very normal. Australia is getting a little bit of a break over here. But this... Come on, this is happening. What is this? This is going down. Even a little bit over here. On the, on the side into Arizona. That doesn't surprise me at all. Tucson Gem Show, you guys. That's a gem and jam. But right here. It's pretty much. If I, I think it's almost right. Maybe that's more into New Mexico than I'm thinking. But if that's over by Arizona, Tucson. Right over here. That's That explains that. So I've got that figured out. We got that figured out. Good job, everybody. <laughs> I'm joking. I literally don't want to know or claim anything. But. I'm just going to keep looking and seeing weird stuff like, what the heck is that? Are you seeing this? <laughs> Excuse you? <laughs> I mean, gosh, it's probably nothing. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Uh, look at that. That's probably nothing. Just some silly gobbledygook. The computers are so funny, you know. What? It's so silly. I'll just reload this and I'll probably look totally normal. Ta-da! See, it's fine. Told you, it got me last time too. This one gets really weird. Always reload your page when you see something weird is something I have learned. There's a conspiracy theorist. Oh! There it goes again. Well, I didn't see that. Never mind, I didn't see that. Oh, I didn't see that. <laughs> what is that? It's just an error. It's okay. Indian Ocean, we've got a storm. Anybody else over here off of Australia? This has been going on for a while, all of this. So 
that will not be news to you guys. I'm just looking to see if there's anything that we're not expecting to see. We're getting, we're getting some warmth up here that's abnormal. Mm -hmm -hmm. Looking good. Let's look at the impact of the entire planet. The solar wind on the entire planet coming in from the right, going left. Solar wind. Imagine my mouse is the solar wind. Whee! And these two dots are just two pictures of our Earth. Magnetic field is coiling a little bit, building up a little heat behind the planet. More than usual, honestly. And for the data, it doesn't make total sense to me. So that's just my side note on that. We have the Mayan calendar here, the red magnetic serpent today, but it's not just in the center, it's also on the top. So it's like the red, ma red magnetic serpent and its higher self are activated today. So do you guys know anything about the red magnetic serpent? Maybe it's gonna come out of the Kilauea volcano today because of the, the concern about a, an eruption. I don't know, but I unify in order to survive, attracting instinct. I seal the store of life force with the magnetic tone of purpose. I am guided by my own power doubled. I think that is because of this, these two stacked on each other as well, because that's in my chart. My chart does this, not with the serpent, with this guy, the yellow human. I've said too much. No, I haven't. It's the yellow spectral human. But uh, that's today. And we've got a Scorpio moon. Yummy. Okay. Scorpio moon creates the need to delve into your feelings as deep as possible. You desire meaningful emotional exchanges now more than at any time, even if it is not easy. And I totally agree. I had those experiences today. Even if it just happens, even casually amongst my friends. It's just moments where... That intimacy between us is important because it's essential for our emotional stability, if that, if that makes sense. And it is a purifying thing because that emotional stability is happening because you're in a, having an impure thought and it's not resonating. And usually you tell your friend, your friend goes, no, stop it. And then you're like, thank you for the permission to follow my momentum in, with stopping that parasitic idea or whatever. That's my two cents on that, apparently. So let's see if there's anything else I'm missing. So we're not seeing high aurora. We're not seeing high solar wind impact. I would say the KP index is pretty low. Thank you again. That's hilarious. Thank you again for subscribing to my YouTube channel. Uh, that's, that's them's the breaks, you know. I didn't do a video before a certain time today. It's 2.20 p.m. So someone was like, oh, we're going to unsubscribe. <laughs> But thank you for subscribing. Next time I open this window, I want to see 8,000 subscribers. Let's just take on 2,000 more, 1,000 more people. Right off, just all at once. See what happens. <laughs> Whatever. I don't know how people do it, honestly. Every time I get even like 10 to 20 more followers sometimes, I just am like, ooh, I have new things to do and I get busy. We're learning about scalable business, and I'm like, oh my goodness, this is quite the art, literally. I'm looking at the planets, everything's looking all right. I can't see anything in significance that I have to mention. Sorry, astrologers, if I'm not noticing something, but we're gonna move on. Again, if you're seeing my videos and you're like, what the heck, I wanna learn. That's fine, go to my YouTube channel, Right up at the top, Space Weather Lectures. The first one here I'd recommend is How to Become a Space Weather Watcher. I believe that one is going to help you, but the classic one, I think with the most fresh and the most, I would say, 101 kind of energy might be this video that plays automatically when you go to my channel. It's also in the playlist. It's my one of my older videos, but I re-watch it and I'm like, wow, I really put some stuff in there that I don't usually even repeat now. And some of it didn't even stick in my own brain, if you can imagine it. But watching it, you'll realize, you're like, wow, this is dense. And it was. These all are kind of dense. But if you don't shy away from dense, and maybe you're one of those people who accidentally watched Flat Earth videos for three hours or maybe 20, I'm sorry. And I made these, and I promise 
it's with no intention to hypnotize you in any sort of direction. I just kind of thought sharing my thesis, my hypothesis as I go would be the ethical thing to do. So that's why I did it because I like living an ethical life. It feels amazing. I truly am so very grateful for, <laughs> I mean, I'm not perfect for sure, but wow, I am grateful for the path that I have walked and the level of ethics that I've worked with and been forced to be in. And it doesn't come without its tests and even my own consciousness makes questions and it's the rev it'll reveal itself later, later Alexis sort of reply. And you gotta have faith because I've watched these larger cycles and even astrologers know a larger cycle, something just clicks and then boom, like you resolve something that you were struggling with for 12 years. And then like that, it was nothing. Like I experienced somewhat today. So if you're getting bad news and something in you is just like, it's not bad, this isn't bad and it's not tearing you apart anymore because you've got solutions and you've got some sort of fortitude in you, good job. Like. I'm right there with you. We did something right. We've matured. I'm proud of us. We are not afraid. And I'm so grateful to feel that bravery. And if you're brave and want to do space weather yourself, here's all the links. There's even some of the apps I use. My lectures are here. And this is the link in my bio on Instagram. So I have all my socials here. I've got the clothing that I've designed here for all of us my Patreon newsletter, which I'd encourage you all to please sign up for. Just sign up. It's a newsletter. Go ahead. Hit it up. I've always got more things in the works, but right now I'm just cruising and reporting on space weather and solar cycle 25. I've created some wearables to help bring awareness to that if it's something you're into. And I've only chosen the 100% cotton products that Teespring offers us to print our designs on and they ship it to you. So these are all the 100% cotton long sleeves. And I've got the X5 solar flare. We got the last day of 2023, the strongest of our solar cycles so far. And I have solar cycle 25 on the back. If you want to nerd out about that, if you want to wear the Schumann resonances that went weird on Father's Day, just to like draw the eye, but then have the, the definition on your back, that option's there. I love those designs. I'm excited to get them. As soon as somebody gets one of these designs, I'll get one for myself. That's kind of the, the game I'm going to start playing. So if any of these designs are calling to you and you've been like, not sure when, or you forgot or whatever, I'm literally like that. So I love when people repeat themselves literally, but if you forgot or whatever, and you want to buy one of these, as soon as you do whatever design you buy, I'm tempted to buy the exact same one and wear it. Uh, in solidarity with you and then keep that trend going until I have one of everything <laughs> and I think that'll be really fun so and I'll know that it'll be because of you that I also got to have one so that's kind of fun it's just the fun I just think of these fun little games for us so it's sentimental I'm a romantic and if you are romantic I would enjoy your company on my Instagram I'm following back all the people who especially like my meme stacks because it's, you know, the view into my whatever I am and my humor. But if you resonate with that, then I'm like, okay, I can friend you. <laughs> You're probably on the same page and aren't going to be thrown off by whatever I'm about to do next. So that gives me that kind of security. <laughs> but I'm forward like that too. So if I like somebody's stuff, I will follow their work for years. I will be an active participant as much as I can. I fall in love with things and I just, until I really, until things go really sour and honestly, my own standards for that are even dropping because as I age, which I knew it would, but like I'm more and more forgiving and I'm enjoying that part of the awakening too is becoming more forgiving as a person, more compassionate and having more fun with how unique humans are and giving them time to process things, giving myself time. I don't know, I'm having fun with social media. Not everybody has a good time, but me, I have a good time. And I share things like this. I have followed pretty much 
the news station of every major city in the United States on Instagram. So I get all of the news, like local news from all these different places I've never been. And we've got our Groundhog Day today. And the Groundhog said, early spring. So that means a long grow season, which means all of this plasma coming in is all going to be for healthy grow in North America, I hope. Really strong and prosperous crops, I hope, and I, I'm grateful for because I love to eat. I'm a happy eating human down here. So thanks for joining my website as well. If you need, if you don't want to do Patreon, you're like, don't even want to do the free, free newsletter, and you don't want to be bothered, and you only want to know when the like most intense thing ever happens or if I get kicked off of somewhere or something crazy happens that's like super emergency. And you just need to keep keep like one little tiny thread attached to me as a creative. Just go to ascensiondiaries.com. This will pop up in like five seconds and just put your email in there. And then you have other options. You can join my Telegram, hang out with us and chit chat if it, until they shut us down. I don't know. And then Patreon go there and join the newsletter until it shut us down. I don't know. Like the election season's about to happen. We saw what happened last time. I've survived on social media all these years, but I still kind of poke the envelope regularly. And I think that's just like what I was born to be. I don't know. There's many a prophecy I've heard about these times. It's very interesting. So prophecy when it comes to stuff flying through our sky, though, we have the Alpha Centaurids as the meteors that are scheduled. And then we have this giant object that's expected to fly through our airspace. Do I have it on here? Where did I post about that? I thought I was going to see the footage. It's not the one going towards the sun, I don't believe. It's a different object. Oh, man, I've lost it. Come on. We know you're out here somewhere. It's in one of these stacks, I believe. That object is, oh, not that stack. This is, oh yeah, there was also a potential that a raccoon basically took out the electro, electronic structure of a part of Toronto yesterday. That was brutal. So here's the giant asteroid that's going to be flying past today. They said it was about the size of the Empire State Building. Now, in a more broad term, skyscraper size rock or it's a spaceship, whatever it is, it's going to be visible with your with your civilian telescopes. So there's got to be some kind of like, they got to let us know, I would hope. So that's cool. I definitely look forward to getting a telescope that I can look at the sun and all of these little objects flying past as potentially in the future. Finally, on this video, the last note, which is kind of weird, synchronistically, that's something that I think we need to talk about or maybe research more, which I had no idea. Go to the Wikipedia page after you're done reading about the Schumann resonances on other planets. Go to the curse and mark of Cain because this is like a biblical thing, but for me, I, the Bible stuff is all embedded. All these holy books, the last couple of centuries, are embedded into our culture. So I've been born in this culture, and these subtle energies of all these tales and methods and symbols are all, all embedded around me, and I've been trying to figure out where they come from, right? And so you become, you study religion, and you start studying these books, and then you start realizing that these words are everywhere. So the, the word cane came to mind today and I like, even like the brand Raising Cane's, like the, the fast food chain for chicken fingers came to mind and I was like, cane, I was like, isn't that in the Bible? And I was like, oh my gosh, and now I have to read this. And I'm halfway down this Wikipedia page and it just keeps getting more and more weird and I'm just like, oh my gosh, now I'm seeing that there's like a Baptist segregation about the curse of Cain and like even talking about people's skin color being like part of their punishment from God. Like the conversation I didn't know people were having, you know what I'm saying, in religion and religious studies. So just wanted to bring awareness to that. I wasn't aware of that. So I think... I need to discuss that more 
and meditate on that more because it's in our society and it seems like there's some good stuff and there's some bad stuff and some people are interpreting this way and the other as usual. So when we have moments like that where we feel incoherent, what do we do? We meditate. <laughs> so please join me in wrapping up this video and this kind of longer report and update with the meditation. And even though we may not be artificially getting stoked into alpha brainwave state, even though I've been streaming so long, maybe we do have some more evidence of that. No, it looks like things are calming down. So good. This is nice. We're getting a little bit of a break from whatever, whatever loudness that was. As I'm trying to th say things vague because I don't want anyone to get mad at me. Like literally, I'm trying not to offend people who some are very literal. And again, I went into psychology. I learned about people and the DSM-5, actually the DSM-4, the 3, the 4, and the, out, the 5 wasn't even out yet when I was in school. It was just about to come out, but they were already protesting it. And it was kind of like there was this fight between, you know, the old and the new and blah, 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 and how labeling this and that can cause people to have, you know, more of a handicap than more empowerment and there's there's a lot of debate about labeling people in psychiatry and psychology but the insurance companies want them to do it and the education system wants them to do it and whoever else wants us to classify people and there's been this like hunger to do so but the the spectrum of people and their experiences and their passion for their their niche interest especially but just in general I've learned about lots of different disabilities I would say that people deal with and that there are some prevailing pattern disabilities which means we've made some labels and the DSM-5 does exist because we can almost put people in categories to a point where it's helpful guidelines to start with as you begin working with your own client and patient. And once you, ha over time, many people get their diagnoses changed and their treatment gets changed and they try new things and blah, blah, blah. Being taken care of by a, med a, a medicine person is quite a privilege and some people use it as like a crutch, I've noticed in our society. But I've made my channel and my services to be a crutchless place where I'm not being suppressed by my own patients, but I'm able to address a large variety of people all over the spectrum. People who take things very literal, like the Vulcans do in Star Trek, and people who are very territorial and competitive in the field of science and, ac and academics because of, and really, I mean, evolutionary psychology taught me a lot about how human behavior developed and so on, and back in tribal times and why we do things the way we do them it's there really is a, a richness of knowledge in this research but there's holes and so on but the biggest holes had to do with the earth resonances the solar activity and the collective consciousness and its ability to be affected and for you to affect it but the studies are outside of school and you they're flooding all over social media and people are trying to share this information because it's been so liberating for them. So I don't want to offend anybody and I'm trying to bring information that I feel like is already trending beyond me and I'm not the problem here for sure. I'm just growing with the tree of our whole civilization and I'm happy and I want to participate and bring peace and love and a soothing commentary for the busy folk out there while you do your specialties which I rely on and I'm grateful for and probably would struggle to learn because I do struggle to learn things quickly it takes me a long time to learn stuff I'm resistant a lot of time to learning but I wasn't to this and some things really come easy and those things are my strengths and I'm here to share them with you and my family and this planet and so my strength here is to have a soothing voice and to remember the importance of meditation 
So please meditate with me. Let's do like five breaths and put the intention to receive the good and send the healing codes to the collective consciousness, our planet, all those exploded places, the plane that crashed, Hawaii, um, everybody's Karen, inner Karen. We're going to send soothing, healing codes as we breathe in the good vibes and the good prana, mana, chi of the universe. So let's do that together. Five breaths, please, and thank you. And then at the end, I'll tell you what I've seen, and we'll wrap it up. Breathe in. Breathe in. Breathe in. Breathe out. Breathe in. Breathe out. Breathe in. Hold. Good intentions, good intentions, good intentions, good medicine for the world, and breathe out. Excellent. So I just want to give a shout out to my friends who support me while I venture in this study. And I know it's annoying sometimes (laughs) that I always have some sort of space weather chart every time you're uncomfortable, but I'm grateful that you hold space for me to do that because this research has helped a lot of people and your feedback and your support and you pushing me helps a lot of people too so thank you so much for being a friend of mine and all the tiny and all the big ways I see it all (laughs) I see it all I appreciate it and the stuff I don't see I hope and I pray that I'm graced with that awareness now so I may thank you properly through my performance on the next video and so on with the rest of my work I do in your honor (laughs) and out of love I also want to share that I saw right away who came to me is a spirit guide that's been messaging me for like two days and it's a mouse and so mouse energy came running right up to me and was right in my face I saw this cute little field mouse So shout out to the field mouses, the space mouses. (laughs) If you know, you know. And I will see you on the next video. Thanks for the love. Bye for now. Bubble beep.